episode we're going to take a look at a Sansui model SC3300 stereo cassette deck. Now Sansui back in the late 70s early 80s they came up with the design of removing the cassette holder assembly. Their reason for doing so was they felt that any extra component that handles a cassette is a cause for concern. It can cause alignment problems. So they wanted a direct access. So we have a little cover here. You open it up, it exposes the heads, and you load your cassette directly. Isn't that cool? I love these decks. This is one of my favorite decks because you see the whole cassette. It is just, it's just a cool machine that we're going to take a look at here. And usually when I repair old vintage equipment like this, I try to sell it. And but I just love these decks. I love these old Sansuis. They were just built like a brick, you know what? And this is a piece I just may have to keep myself. So got the power plugged in now and turned on. We'll put on the power and well, that's a good sign. Lights light up on it. Now let's just see whether we've got any uh I think we're gonna need a belt on this thing from, from the fields of, of things here. This belt doesn't doesn't feel like there's any uh, resistance at all. So I have a feeling it's going to be a belt that we need on this unit. Oh no, it's actually turning. The, tape, the, the capsule is actually turning when I press the cassette in switch. So let's just see what happens. Okay, the tape is moving and it's stopping. Aha! It's going into auto stop. What do you think that might be? Hmm? What do you guys think might cause that problem? Let me give you a little hint. Do you see what I see? Hmm. Now it's moving. Do we have any sound? Let's find out. I know what the problem is, by the way. I know exactly what the problem is with this thing. I don't think there's anything on this tape. So I have to find the tape. Oh yeah, there is. There is some music on this tape. That's some cool stuff. And uh, I don't want to play this too long because uh, we may have a bit of a copyright to claim if I put that on there too long. But uh, uh, interesting story about this this music here. And I, I, actually, I actually recorded this specifically for another deck that I'm in the process of working on right now and I'll tell you the story when I play that other, when I do that other video. The music here the, um, one of the members of that band just happens to live next door to me and he's actually the guitarist for that band back in the 60s and 70s and I figured what a better what, what a better way to honor the man that made that music. I have his tape deck here that I'm going to be uh, servicing on a future video. I've actually shot some of my bass tracks for it already. Uh, I just haven't got around to getting the parts to fix it, so we'll be seeing that come up on another video. I'm, and I'm not, not, not going to let the cat out of the bag yet because it's a pretty screwcom deck. Um, I've, I've kind of shown it shown it off, so you'll, you'll see it when, when it comes up. But anyway, this one here is now appears to be working. and But it wasn't working. It was stopping. And we have no rewind. Oh, our very slow rewind. We're going to have a, a rubber roller in this thing here that's slipping, looks like. But um, the reason it was stopping was because the auto stop mechanism on these units here is operated by the tape counter. That's why I lowered the camera down so you can see it. When I first put this thing into play, the tape counter was not moving and it is driven by a belt off of the take up uh, spool. So that if the take up spool stops turning, or that belt starts slipping, the auto stop mechanism is actually triggered from the tape counter. And I'll show you how it works. So we'll lift the top off, nice wooden cabinet here, and reveal a very well built tape deck inside. So it's, uh, it's two motors on this one. Got a nice, it's got a belt drive capstan motor, and the belt is actually okay. But this motor spins very, very freely. It's not like your conventional um, decks where the, the motor itself has got a lot of a lot of internal resistance to it. That's what kind of threw me initially. 
but it is a nice easy spinning motor. There's nothing nothing seizing up about this. I'll give, give you a little rundown on how this thing senses the tape is not moving. This is going to be difficult probably for some of you to see, but I'm going to try and point this out here. I just got to find something to point with. Here we go. So down in here, now well, that's not very good. Let me just find something else here. It doesn't have a hook on the end of it. Here, we'll just bend this hook out. Down in here, way down in here, ah, I'm in the way with my, my pointer, but trying to get my hand in there without being in the shot. This is difficult enough to see, never mind to try and film it. This little, that little piece that I'm touching, that's actually a magnet. And there's a little reed switch or a Hall effect sensor. In this case, it's probably a reed switch. That as that rotates, you can see it turning, you see? And that's coupled by belt to the tape counter. If, I, if the tape counter stops, that will stop too. Right, you see? Play, stop it, and it'll stop. The white wire back here on the control board is the actual sensor line. If we scope it, you'll see what happens when I put it in play. You see? I'm just going to uh, try to put more gain on here so you guys can see it. I'm just going to shut that music off there so that they don't get upset with me. Okay, you can see what's happening here. There we go. Now you can see it. So as that reel rotates, if I stop it from turning, it stops. So all we've got is we've got a belt, either a belt that's slipping or one of the little bearings that this that the uh, tape counter rides on is uh, is uh, sticking a bit. If I go to fast forward, obviously it's a higher frequency. If I crank up the scope, you'll see it. There's fast forward. If I go to rewind play you to see that so the problem we've got on this deck is a pretty simple one to solve and I know it's mechanical not electrical because when I first plugged the unit in the tape counter was not turning so we either have a belt that's slipping more than likely we have a lazy belt it's getting a bit worn or we've got uh, a problem with the actual uh, gear the grease maybe the grease on the on the top side here in behind the shaft there's a little uh, little uh, worm gear that turns the actual um, drums the tape counter rollers or drums so if that gets gummed up of course it'll make this stick a bit and if this sticks you're gonna have the uh, magnet below it not turning and if the magnet below it, you can see it down here. That's a little, actually a little better shot. You can actually see it right inside here, where my Q-tip is pointing. That is the, the part that spins. So anyway, we're going to take this thing apart and loop it up and check the tension and check the belts and get this one back together because this is definitely a keeper, this one. Or maybe if I don't keep it, I'll sell it. But uh, a deck like this is actually going to bring some pretty good money. Um, most A lot of tape decks don't bring in much money. But uh, when you've got a, a one that's of good quality like this, and this is one of the better ones, um, these ones here actually still could fetch a few dollars. I just wish it hadn't been owned by a smoker because, ugh, look at this, 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 the yellow tar stains on it from tar and nicotine. It's just gross. Anytime you get equipment that someone has smoked, it, you can really tell it just, it just dulls down the finish on the... Uh, the metal parts but uh, that should actually clean up quite nicely I would think. So I'll start by just removing the front bezel and uh, see what we can get at when we first take the front off it. I think I can probably get at the uh, mechanics for the tape counter if I just remove the knobs and the front panel here and that may be as far as I need to go. I should be able to change the belts from that without having to even disassemble the mechanism which is Another nice thing about these uh, these old units is that uh, they were relatively most of these were relatively easy to service. There there are some exceptions to that rule. Techniques made some very difficult to service units, as does as did Iowa or Awa, and uh, Sony also produced some beauties that were you know tough to work on. 
but uh, most of these decks were relatively straightforward just pull the knobs off just like that and this bezel goes off just like that and then we drop it and break it no seriously we didn't break it but okay here's what I'm talking about okay so this is the little belt that I'm thinking is probably just about shot you see when I when I hold the the tape counter that one slips so this one may be let's just check it for tension it may be that this is the one that's causing the problem although these belts typically aren't very tight because oh it's got actually it still has a fair bit of tension on it I don't think that's the problem maybe we just have to lubricate the shaft and lubricate this shaft up here these are the ones I'm thinking might be causing the problem because there is still a bit of tension on that uh, on that belt I don't think that that's causing the problem but uh, we're going to lubricate I'll lubricate both the shaft and this other one up here and uh, and see if that's going to do it it might be the belt still it might be just a bit slippery but we're going to we're going to take a look at that and see I can take off I think if I take out a couple of screws here the whole front of this should come off and I can access the belts and and all of the uh, you can't see what I just showed you if I take out this these screws here I should be able to take this plastic assembly off and access the mechanism so let's do that there's that bloody dog again this goes on every day every day this dog howls Yeah, Fido, shut up. You hear that? I'm in my garage. The door is closed. Um, my office window overlooks their yard, and it just drives me absolutely crazy, especially if I'm trying to do any voiceover work. I have to redo stuff when I'm trying to do voiceover work because... Uh, the uh, dog comes through on the microphone. So this is the belt here that I thought maybe is a little bit loose, but it, it actually feels like it's got a fair bit of tension on it. This is the one that slips. Like if I'm turning the shaft here, if I stop this and you can see it slipping, it's actually slipping right on this end here. I'm just going to take it off and check it out. I mean, it, it, it feels like it's got tension. Maybe we'll just clean this thing. I mean, it doesn't feel like it's ready to break. And that certainly turns easy enough. We're just going to clean this thing. I'm just going to get some alcohol and we'll just uh, give this thing a clean and see if that increases my uh, my my tension at all on it. And of course, I've got another belt over here. I'm going to also clean this one here. On the other side, over on this side. I don't to think it's just that one's just an idler, it's just a freewheeling pulley. Hmm. We'll also uh, put some we'll put some rosin on the uh, rubber uh, wheels here. You see the 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 rubber drive tires here. These wear out too. So we clean the belt. I'm just using some uh, isopropyl alcohol, and basically we want to clean all the the film. Like it's going to have a smoke film on it, just from this unit was in an environment where someone smoked. So it gets the film from just cigarette smoke and that well you can see what's come off that belt that right there is probably all that's wrong with this thing we'll put the belt back on here and put it around the pulley and as you can see now even if I stop the tape counter from turning here the other pulley turns so I've just increased the uh, grip by cleaning the guns off we're going to do the same thing for the rubber rollers here I may not even need to put the anti-slip compound on if I just clean the surface of these
because the rubber itself is probably just dirty. As you can see there's a fair bit of dirt on them. We're going to clean the pinch roller while we've cut this apart. And then we can start reassembling this unit and uh, see how it works. So we'll start out by giving the head a good scrub. One really nice thing about this design with the open caps and the open uh, tape head and the open pinch roller like this is it made it very easy to clean it. And of course anybody that knows uh, audio components, the best thing you can do is keep them clean. Number one cause of tape eating is dirty pinch rollers and capstan shafts and the number one cause of poor sound quality of course would be dirty heads. So the design of this unit is such that it's, it's actually very easy to clean these units uh, more so than other designs where they've got the tape uh, compartment, the tape door. This one being an open design, you just flip down the little cover and away you go off to the races. So now we can put the front panel back on. Again, these units were very well built, very easy to line up the parts. As long as we get our switches lined up, the whole front panel just drops in place. We can put the screws in. And now we just have to put the knobs back on. Turn the power back on. And we'll get our tape out again. And we will check this for calibration. I got to get my uh, calibration tape here. We'll check that for um, speed calibration momentarily, but we'll just check it first of all for to make sure that it plays. And of course, we have. Okay, we're going to get our speed calibration tape. We'll check the speed out of this thing. We'll use the good old guitar tuner to make sure that we are actually running at the correct speed. If not, we'll fix that. So here's our speed calibration tape. Load that in, play. Sounds a little sharp to me. Let's put on the uh, good old guitar tuner. We'll see. Yeah, we're a little bit high. So we'll just adjust that down. The motor speed control is on the back of the motor here. Okay, you can see our speed adjustment. There we go. Pretty darn close. Good enough for me. As far as I'm concerned, that's dead on. Go back, we can play our tape again and then we'll make a test recording off of a CD. Sounds exactly right to me. So let's go and uh, we'll make a test recording off of uh, a CD. I noticed that my output level control, a little bit of noise in there, so we're going to clean the controls and then we'll do our test recording. Controls we need to get at are down here. Playback controls there. Recording level control is actually, where is it? It's actually behind over here, so we're just going to get in there with the extension nozzle on our neutral can and give it a shot. And that should clean up these controls quite nicely. So we'll just set the levels on this thing first. We'll put it into pause, record, and play. I can just start my music up here and we'll set our levels. This is a normal tape, so. Okay, so 
and now we're ready to go. We'll, we'll recue the tape. I don't mind playing this music. This is royalty free music, so we're good to go. Release the pause, the tape is moving. Cue the CD, go. Okay, the song's done. We're going to rewind the tape here. I know the rewind's now working nice. If I put the memory counter on, it'll stop when it gets back to where I reset the counter at the beginning of this track. There we go. Now we can play it back. That uh, was the beginning before I even got going here, I think. Yeah, I miscued it. So here's our beginning where we cued it up. See, this one's fixed. Something else I wanted to show you on this. This is something I, I, I you don't see very often. Oh, let's go right back to the beginning here. I still have the, the, the memory on there. It has a tape lead-in. To wind the tape forward past the lead-in. You know how all cassette tapes have got the... Sometimes they called it the head cleaner. Like um, I think it was Maxell and TDK. They would call it a, a, a cleaner. They have a little lead-in button that will wind the tape past that lead-in so that you're ready to go. I think that's kind of a neat feature, to tell you the truth. So there we go. Sansui SC3300 is back in service, ready to rock and roll here. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. There you go. We'll catch you later.